Hey everybody, welcome back to Grain Markets and Other Stuff. Thank you for joining me. It is Monday, May 3rd, uh, kicking off the month of May here with the first official business day. If you guys are listening on the podcast, as always, really appreciate it. Make sure you leave me a review, leave me some feedback. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, make sure you like the videos, help me out to get this channel to grow. I think I've got 1,800 subscribers on YouTube. I'd really love to get that up to about 2,000 sometime soon. So uh, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you like this content. Content. Um, I may have, for those of you guys who are listening on the podcast, I might have some new intro music soon. I made a record uh, with a couple of my friends here in Nashville um, a few weeks ago, and we're waiting on the masters to come back. But uh, it sounds pretty good, in my opinion, at least. So I'm, I may I may change up the music a little bit. Uh, I'll see if, if you guys like that or don't like it either way. But um, uh, so that may be coming up. I wanted to do kind of just a conversation with myself today. And um, keep in mind before I start any of this, guys, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not advising that you do anything. I'm going to talk about my own personal situation. I'm going to talk about uh, some conversations that I've had with people that are more intelligent than myself and um, just kind of give you my two cents here on um, the situation when it comes to investing, uh, retirement, um, looking toward the future, that sort of stuff. So we're in a situation right now where everything is really expensive, right? Stock market's at all-time highs. Real estate is at all-time highs. Um, alternative investments, cryptocurrency is at all-time highs. Um, you buy bonds, there's still no yield there. It's, it's like really difficult to figure out what to buy. And, um, you know, I have said in previous podcasts that I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, the United States stock market. I still think the S&P is a great place to put money. Um, I did an entire episode on, on how I invest in the S&P 500 for retirement. And, and I handle all my own retirement stuff. I've been doing it for more than a decade now. But in, in any case, I'm, I'm not rethinking my strategies, but I think that there are some risks here that uh, you should be aware of if you're not already, or at least things that have been on my mind. I'm going to tell you what's on my mind. And some of this may be very, very wrong. Maybe some of this has some bearing. When I look at the stock market, I see, you know, a market that is overvalued by like most people's metrics, um, you know, your PE ratios, all that stuff that people use to gauge stock prices, yet it continues to go higher. Uh, why does it continue to go higher? I think there's optimism regarding the economy. I, I really do believe, um, this summer into the fall, I, I think the economy is going to be fantastic. I think people are going to be out and about and spending money and buying things like nobody's business. You know, here in Nashville, uh, Nashville, the city, and I live outside of Nashville, but in Nashville, you know, everything's pretty much wide open. And it is uh, unbelievable how crowded places are. Uh, restaurants, bars, um, you know, everything Everything is crowded. Traffic is, is pretty much back to normal. It's, it's unbelievable. And I think that that's probably what you'll see throughout the country, barring some big resurgence of COVID or something. So, you know, you, you've got that aspect of it. The other aspect of it is, is the combination of extremely low interest rates and this massive government stimulus. The government has introduced so much new money into the system and it needs a home. And you pair that with with interest rates near zero and it just creates these like inflated markets where you've got so many more dollars chasing the same assets, whether it be the stock market or real estate or cryptocurrency or uh, a new boat or a new car or whatever it is. There's just a lot of dollars out there chasing essentially the same amount of assets. And, and this applies to a lot of markets. It, it really probably applies to every market. I mean, I mean, I think there's some of that going on in probably the grain and livestock markets. I think there's certainly some of it going on in the stock market. Um, some other markets have not been quite as good. Like, you know, the energies have been stronger and, and gasoline prices were up, but they're not as high as they could be. But I, I do think that that's a factor that's had an impact here. So like, if you're looking for, if you're, if you're younger and, and I don't know if I'm younger, I'm getting closer to middle age here. Um, but you know, I've still got 20 plus years till retirement, right? Um, I, you still, I've still thought in my head that buying stocks is a good thing, but I think there's a risk here. The risk that I see right now, this is my opinion. I think the economy is going to get too hot, too fast. And I think that the government may have to take steps 
to control inflation perhaps sooner than what just about everybody thinks. And I'm not the only person that thinks this. There are people that I've talked to, uh, people far more intelligent than me, who uh, believe the same thing. Um, how does so? Let's say that inflation gets really out of control, right? Um, let's say that that in, the Fed and and um, the government finally comes out and admits, yeah, we're we're seeing some massive inflation here. The CPI number finally goes up substantially and and exceeds uh, a level at which they feel comfortable. The government only has really they've really only got one tool that they can use to fight inflation. And that would be to raise interest rates. I mean, you can raise interest rates or you can use some sort of like wage or price control. I don't think you're going to see that because that would cause job losses. It would cause recession. It would would be a bad deal. Um, But monetary policy, either reducing the money supply um, or raising interest rates is the way you cool down an economy. Uh, What would hurt the real estate market? Higher interest rates, right? If you can't borrow money for nothing, um, real estate's not going to be as lofty as it is right now. I think it would probably hurt the stock market. If you can't borrow money for nothing, I don't know that stock prices are where they are right now. Um, that ap- applies to like every market out there. I mean, the money is flowing and the money is cheap and it's helped to inflate like every asset class out there. So my fear here, when I'm looking at the things that I can buy as an investment, okay, stocks, real estate are probably the the two big ones on my radar. I've talked about cryptocurrency before. I'm not going to get too much into that today, but but stocks and real estate, I mean, your risk in real estate, I think real estate's always a great long-term investment, but your risk here is that you buy real estate with cheap money, right? And but you're paying an arm and a leg for it. Um and then all of a sudden, sooner than expected, the Fed comes in and raises rates you're going to have negative equity in that real estate like off the bat. I mean, it, you could see a, a big contraction in real estate values very, very quickly, in my opinion, if the Fed were to come in and raise rates. Now, when you look at at what the FOMC mem- members have said, like nobody thinks there's going to be any interest rate hike till 2022 or 2023. I mean, I think you could make the argument at least that there's, there is risk of a rate hike um, prior to that and that's what really scares me when it comes to like every investment and i don't know if that happens or not there there are smart people who think that it that that's exactly what will happen that this economy is just going to get there's too much money out there there's too much cheap money out there there are too many people doing too many things this this economy is recovering quicker than expected and um they're going to have to raise rates they're going to have to do it to control inflation and that is going to put a stop to the bull markets in real estate in stocks and so many other things so i have I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of at a crossroads here. Like, okay, do I stick with my game plan of buying stocks or index funds or whatever it is, you know, on a monthly basis? Do I do I stick with that even though I know that there's risk? I know that there's risk of a rate hike, and and just stick it out and say, okay, this isn't Joe. This isn't a, a two, three, four month ball game for you. This isn't even a, a four or five year ball game. This is like a 25 year ball game. Do I just stick with that idea? I think that's probably what I'm leaning toward. But part of me in the back of my head says, you know, there, there may be an opportunity to, um, to, to make some really good investments if there is that interest rate hike, which seems like it's inevitable. I mean, it's, is, is it two, three years out? Is it only a year out? Could it be this year if things really get out of control? Those are the questions that I kind of ask myself. So I would love to buy more stock. I'd love to buy some real estate. Um, I just, and, and I've bought stock at all time highs many occasions. I mean, probably more months than not, you're buying close to all time highs here these last 10 years, which is has never really bothered me a whole lot. But for some reason, like I'm having this, uh, it's not, a, I'm not, I'm not second guessing myself necessarily, but I'm, I'm worried that any sort of change to this monetary or fiscal policy could be a big, big deal. I would like you guys to weigh in. If you have any comments on this, if you think I'm crazy, let me know. If you think that the government will never raise interest rates, let me know. If you are a uh, person who believes that all you should own is gold and cryptocurrency and guns, uh, let me know. If you are somebody who thinks that I'm way overthinking this and that you need to just kind of ride the wave here, uh, let me know. I'm kind of, I'm honestly just kind of interested what people think because I've, I've, I've posed this question to like 
everyone I've talked to who's involved in in finance and investing, and it doesn't seem like anybody has a really great answer for it. Like, where do you put cash right now? What do you do with money? I know Warren Buffett and and Berkshire, they're sitting on like hordes of cash. And because of that, they've underperformed the S&P. They've underperformed a lot of things here recently. And and maybe they're waiting for a, a rate hike and a big correction to get back in. I just, I don't know. I think this is really difficult. I think that the position that the government's put us in with these policies makes things very, very difficult. So if you think you've got a great place to put cash, I would love I would love to know what you think because I don't have an answer. This, this isn't me telling you uh, what I what I think or where you should where I think you should be investing. I'm kind of like more asking you like what do you what do you think? Um, you go on YouTube, there's all sorts of people talking about different things that they think that you should do. Uh, one of the more popular opinions is to not hold cash. Um, don't hold any cash because you know you should go buy something that's going to appreciate because cash is depreciating. That's one opinion that that's out there. Is that the right opinion? Um, <clears throat> nobody can predict these markets, but I I find this to be a very difficult and unique situation, at least in in the in the context of of my career in investing. I, I'd say that this is this is a, a tricky situation, guys. It really is. Um, again, leave me some comments, leave me some feedback, shoot me an email to info at standardgrain.com. I'd love to hear what you think. Everybody have a great day. Catch you a little bit later.